you can relax. Colleen and Eric have a podcast. The world is scary and we're locked in our home. But now we have big microphones. So you can relax. That's the name of our podcast. Hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome to Relax. The podcast. I'm Colleen Ballinger. And I'm Eric. And we are married, and we never get a chance to relax. So we started a podcast for us to relax. And this week, we do need to relax, because it's been one of... I, you know what? I think it's safe for me to say that it has been the worst week of my life. Oh, I love it. So uh, we are excited to do the podcast today, because... We need to just hang out and laugh, right? Okay. Sure. Don't you think? Yeah. It's been a crappy week. Wouldn't you say that? It really has. It really has. <laughs> so uh, we've been going through it. So we are excited today to just kind of like hang out and do some stupid stuff and laugh and have fun. So welcome. Let's have fun. <laughs> Eric, are you going to be silent this episode? <laughs> Yeah, well, it's my it's kind of my episode off since I took over the oh, last whatever. one. Oh, whatever. All right, do you have someone or something you think needs to relax this week? Uh, you go first so I can think of something. Oh, okay. We love a prepared woman. Mm -hmm. Um, I think <laughs> <laughs> I think our cat Daisy needs to relax because she needs to learn how to relax and clean herself. Oh, she has no idea how to she clean herself. She doesn't know how to clean herself and so she most cats like spend the whole day like cleaning themselves sleeping and pooping and eating you know unless you're our other cat Gus then you spend 90% of the day eating 10% of the day pooping well there's and a certain percentage where he's just staring at you like a total like he's creep. gonna kill you yeah. yeah well Daisy um just is the sweetest little cat but she doesn't know how to eat she eats her own hair like we're confident that if she ever she's always died, kind of licking the bottom Looking of her own throat <laughs> and getting a large clump of hair and then like eating it like um like, <laughs> like a like uh, a velociraptor or like or a like t-rex uh, would chomp up their food what's the bird with the big I, i'm blanking oh, a pelican a pel like a pelican right, eats a right? fish yeah like she does that with a big chunk of hair yeah and uh, so she's um, she doesn't know how to clean herself she just like licks her no chest idea. her like neck hair and eats it and, and that's her diet is really her only her own hair and it's infuriating because if she doesn't clean herself she gets disgusted she looks disgusting and right now uh, she looks horrible and her she's covered in mats like her fur is all matted and it's just gross so that's a very strange thing uh, with these cats I've never had a cat before in my life or known a cat that needed to be groomed I haven't either until I got these cats uh, but they're so incapable mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've also never known like permanently indoor cats usually like cats you let them out you know you let them yeah. outside for a bit like these cats I, they wouldn't survive very high uh, a day no in the suburbs, no. let alone the wild. No. I'm surprised they've survived at all in our own they home. They might be dead. Um, okay, so wait, who do you think ne needs to relax? Um, Have you thought of anything? Uh, how about no show socks? What are we, what are we what? so That's ashamed of? literally all I wear. <laughs> I know, but I. since when is a society, do we decide, I can't be showing these socks. I don't want people to see... Uh, <laughs> See my socks? I'm embarrassed of the whole concept of socks. So let's still wear them, but let's hide them. And in, in doing so, take away all the purpose and practicality of socks because those things, they don't do it. You still feel the whole top half of the shoe on your foot. They're very uncomfortable. And no matter how much weird, clear, this will stick to the back of your foot stuff they put on it, they inevitably slip down your foot. Yeah, that's They're annoying. very thin. It's, it, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> Don't, don't even wear them if you're if you're you gonna, know, if you're so embarrassed of showing your socks to the world, just don't wear socks. No, you're incorrect. I only wear no show socks, and if I don't wear socks and I wear shoes, that is the most horrendous feeling. I feel Fine, like I'm putting but my. Foot, I feel like a no show feel sock like, feels just as bad. No, I feel like I'm putting. If not worse, because I'm very conscious of it. I feel like I'm putting my foot into someone else's foot skin without a sock on. Like the feeling of a shoe with no sock is like I'm putting your foot into saying, someone else's skin. Let's it's all like not wear socks. I'm saying let's embrace the fact that socks, it's a pretty good invention. And they've existed for hundreds of years, if not Have thousands. <laughs> no. Okay. And anyway. Don't be embarrassed of your socks, people. I'm not going to look at someone and be like, ugh, they're wearing socks. 
this is going to be a very interesting episode because Eric and I are very fragile right now, <laughs> and You're we have so no ambiguous with that. plans. I wonder what people no, if you want to know, be thinking. No, if you want to know what's going on, you can go check out my vlog channel. But um, yeah. Anyway, uh, here let's let's move on. So you said you had something you wanted to do. Uh, yes. What do you want to do? Well, I just, you're such an expert, and our listeners know you're such an expert um, mm -hmm. in all things film and television. Oh, yes. You're a big TV fan. You're a big movie fan. Mm -hmm. And uh, just this week, the Golden Globe nominations came out. Okay. And so I just kind of wanted to get your, you know, your take on uh, who's going to win that coveted Golden Globe. For like one person? Just one who's going to win it? Yeah, well, that's, you bring up a good point uh, for, for viewers that aren't, uh, listeners that aren't aware. Sorry, mm -hmm. my throat is closing and dying. <laughs> um, <laughs> can you explain uh, what the Golden Globes awards are? It's like all the other award shows. You got the uh -huh. Tonys right. for musical theater, Broadway uh -huh. shows. And you've got um, the Oscars. The Oscars, yes. And that's the one The with Academy Awards. That's another one. No, Oscars and Academy Awards. Oh, they're the same. Why do yeah, they have two names? <laughs> you do that. I do I just have two names? Well, who's going to win the Oscar at the Academy Awards? It's kind of, it's the name of like the trophy. That's too many names. They pick a struggle. Like you can only just I, don't, I actually don't know where the term Oscar. I'm sure it's a human, a man. I mean, the, the award is literally a golden man. Yes. So, okay. The golden, the golden globes. The golden globes. Are, is another award show yes. for um, TV shows. And movies. Okay, relax. And variety. Oh, isn't there another one? There's like programs. a SAG Awards or something like that? That is another award show, yeah. Yeah. And there's See, this, you know, you there's know your stuff. The Streamy Awards. I've you won a Streamy before. I've seen it in our house the somewhere. The famous Streamy Award show. You proudly anyway, display okay, it on so the back about, of our toilet. What about the... I do? Is it on the toilet? I don't know where it is. <laughs> um, okay, wait. Time out for real, though. Uh, Golden Globes, yeah, is an award for film and television. Great. Uh, and it is voted on by the Hollywood Foreign Press. The Foreign Press? Whoa, anti... <laughs> no, I'm not anti-foreign. I'm just, like, confused because it's, like, an yeah. American... Uh, yep. Hollywood is, like, an, an America... Yeah, so the Academy Awards, it's voted by members of the Academy. I'd like to thank the members of the Academy. But they're foreign? The Golden Globes, they always say, I'd like to thank the members of the Hollywood Foreign Press Association. So the foreign press, so it's like foreign press members who aren't from here vote on who wins the Golden Globes? Sure. I'm being serious. I actually am curious about this. Oh, I thought you, in this, the premise is that you're an expert. Oh, yeah. So people from all around the globe watch our American television shows and they decide who should win the different awards. That's how it works. Wonderful, love. Okay, so. So I just <laughs> was really interested to hear your take on um, who do you think is going to win best picture drama? Do you think it's The Father? Do you think it's Mank? <laughs> Nomadland? Sorry, you have to start over because I accidentally just threw the cat against the wall. <laughs> We're going to keep that. Do you think it's Promising Wait, Young Woman? Wait, what's the question? What's going to win Best Picture Drama? Oh, Best Picture Drama? Yeah. Wait, which one? Drama or picture? Is it two and one? <laughs> they do, yeah. Okay, maybe, well, well, I mean, they do, for the Golden Globes, they split it between Best Picture Drama and Best Picture Musical or, or Comedy. Why Musical or Comedy? There's a lot of dramatic musicals. Why couldn't it be? Well, it's, I, I don't know. I think, and a lot of times, like, films uh, through whatever means find themselves in a category that they think they're more likely to win. Okay, so anyway, it's the father. As well. The father, Mank, no, Nomadland, Promising Young Woman, or The Trial of the Chicago Seven. Who do you think is going to win? I've heard of the last one. Okay, but you didn't see... Not yet. I really want to see that one, though. Uh-huh. Um, and the other ones I've never heard of. Well, Mank, you know Mank, right? I'm... What's that about? It's um, the spinoff of the TV show Monk, <laughs> <laughs> which is about... Um, this man who is an investigator. I love how the Monk spinoff <laughs> Mank is now nominated for Best Picture Drama. Yeah. They made a movie of it. Uh -huh. So it's going to win for sure. I, uh, I think and it's so about too. And it's about his ex, this girl, the Monk guy. Uh -huh. I've never seen that show, but his ex, <laughs> she wears yeah. a mink. 
that's just the first thing I thought of when I. Th- but it's called Mank. Why is it called Mank? I don't know what a Mank is. I don't know. I just told you why it's called Mank because it's a spinoff of Monk, and the right, lead okay. wears a mink. And you were right. Okay, now this is way more interesting to me. Um, in the category of best motion picture, musical or comedy. Okay. There's five films, but mm-hmm. more like I think it's a real head-to-head mashup here. Okay. Because when you think of musical movies this mm-hmm. year. Mm-hmm. You think of, of course, Hamilton. Yeah, of course. Nominated. Uh-huh. But obviously, it's a really, really tight race between that and The Prom. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, um, and those two head to head. I mean, whoa. Wait, it's just those two? Well, those are the two musicals in that category. Also, in that category is the film Palm Springs, which I feel like we, we saw that. actually did watch. Um, and the reason I'm enthusiastic about that is because I watch about approximately one movie a year. Yeah. The other one is the new Borat movie, which we did also watch. Oh my gosh. Um, but I'm, I'm so just those four. I, I'm specifically interested in that, in the head to head matchup of Hamilton versus the prom. I think it's so stupid that musicals and comedies are together because you think it should be its own category. Well, Hamilton is not a comedy. Well, Right, but it's a musical. Yes. Uh, obviously, uh, The Prom is going to win this one. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so, and this is real, by the way, that that is nominated That's for so Best. That's so weird. Okay. Yeah, and then in the Best Actor. I like that musical, by the way. Just that movie was fun- funny. <laughs> <laughs> so that in the in the Best Actor in a musical or comedy. Um, okay. Lin-Manuel Miranda is nominated. Oh, yes. He, he'll win. Come on. And uh, and he's But he's up against James Corden from The Prom. You are lying to me. I am not me. lying. You're serious? That is a real... Of, and of course it is, because those two performances, I mean, Listen, it's a Listen, I'm not up. here to like knock on him, because I think James Corden... Seen, is it Gordon or Corden? Corden. Corden with the C? Yeah. Why did I think it was Gordon? I don't know. Um. Anyway, I, I think he seems like a lovely person, sure. and I think yeah, he's absolutely. talented and like mm-hmm. awesome. Uh-huh. Um, I thought it was a very interesting, unique choice having him play that role in uh-huh. the musical. Um, so that's really interesting that he's nominated. I think Lynn will win it. This is fun that we're talking about musicals. This is totally my jam. You're into this? Yeah. What else is there? Best television series drama. We have mm-hmm. The Crown, Lovecraft Country. What? The Mandalorian, Ozark, yeah. or Ratched. Is Ozark the cartoon? Uh huh. Um, what cartoon are you talking about? Isn't there one with like an aardvark or something that you used to watch all the time? And you're like, it's so good. What? I don't know. Isn't there one like. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh is uh, that Arrow? No. Is Arrow a cartoon? I. No. I don't. Nope. What? What are you talking about? Uh, why did I think these are all cartoons? How are you a television Is expert? Ozark? Wait, did you say Ozark? Ozark, yeah. I just keep thinking, I just keep picturing a cartoon artwork. Nope. <laughs> it's not about Jason that? Bateman's in it. It's on Netflix. It's really good. Huh. Really? It's not a cartoon? Yep. Are you sure? Uh, what? What's your take on The Mandalorian? What do you think about that show? Eh. Nah. Miss. Skip it. Pass. <laughs> Can you tell me what it's about? <laughs> it's about Yoda when he's a baby. Oh, but well, look at you. I know. I love You get real Star mad Wars. if you come in the room and I have that show on. Well, come on. Get a life. Like, you know, it's just not. Uh-huh. It's a, so who cares? Yoda's a baby. Yeah. And what do you think of The Crown this season? Uh, I, I will be honest. I've walked in on Eric watching it a couple of times and no offense. I mean this in the nicest way possible. It is so boring. I can't believe that you can watch it. Like, I can't believe humans can, like, s- sit through it. It's very well made. It's very well acted. I know. That's what everyone says, and, and I believe uh, that. And I know I'm the one at fault here for not understanding TV and movies and how people can sit through them. But It's interesting how uh, Americans have such a fascination with the royal family. Well, yeah, it is fascinating. But I'd rather watch a documentary on them than a scripted show that's really slow and long. Uh-huh. Okay, and then best television series, musical or comedy. Okay. Emily in Paris. Uh, the Flight Attendant. Okay. You like that one? Uh, it's my favorite. Yeah. Is it a movie? Uh, no, we're still talking about best oh, TV the comedy. The Flight Attendant. Yeah, it's about a woman who s- soars around the world as a flight attendant. It's really good. Mm-hmm. And that's interesting. Shit's Creek. Lovey, don't say bad words. Shit's Creek. Oh my gosh. Um, I've seen a couple episodes of this and I'm, I actually refuse to say my opinion on it because I do not want to be canceled. 
Um, well, I yeah. know it is a very beloved show. So I am s- passing on this one because okay. I'm not about to get canceled today. So I like it. I'm not going to talk about that show. I like Mia Schitt's I'm Creek glad you like it. Uh, Ted Lasso. Wow. These are, I've never Can you tell me about Ted Lasso? Um, it's about a man. Great show. Who lives in the old Wild West, and he lassos his women. <laughs> <laughs> Starring. <laughs> Starring um, Jason Bateman. It's the only name I could think it's of. It's weird how Jason it. Bateman is also in Ozark. And like doing. Well, that's play, a cartoon, playing, so he's just, doing arm, voice, yeah, he's just doing voiceover. Just voiceover. Yeah, and then best TV drama, um, see, uh, The Queen's Gambit. How do you feel about that? You think it's going to take all the awards this year? The Queen's Because you're a Gambit. big chess fan. I thought that show was interesting. We watched yeah, I did parts like that of that show. show. Um, I th- liked that it was female-centered and all of that. Um, wait, that's a nominated? That'll win. I liked that one. That yeah. Was, that was good. Uh, uh, yeah, for uh, wait, best, wait, best limited series. I mean, series. is there more? Like, geez. I mean, is, are people going to watch this or you just read it when they win? Don't you just read it the next day? Yeah, I don't really. Wa- I, yeah, I don't really watch the. I feel like I feel Golden like Globes. Uh, in Hollywood, all these different award shows are very stressful for people. Um, mm-hmm. And when you're stressed, it could make you break out, love. Because especially in award season. I know because my skin goes crazy. I know, and it's so weird that you say that because I was just about to talk about this. Okay. Because we have a sponsor today <laughs> called Apostrophe, and uh, we love Apostrophe. We've talked about them before. And if you're having issues with your skins, this one is for you. Prescription acne treatment really works, but it's hard to get. You have to take time off of work. You have to go see the doctor. We've talked about this. It's a total pain in the butt. I, no way. I cannot stand going to the doctor. You have to call, like, just even just the thought of making a phone call to make the appointment is, I'm stressed right now thinking about it. Have so, you ever been to a dermatologist in person? Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's very stressful. And it's yeah. kind of like embarrassing because it's like they're looking at your skin. You're like, they're judging me. Right. You know what I mean? And uh, anyway, it's yeah, it's a whole thing. I've worn makeup to the dermatologist <laughs> to think I would like trick them <laughs> into thinking I had good skin. Um, it, yeah, it's just embarrassing. I don't like it. So you don't have to worry about any of that anymore. If you use apostrophe, apostrophe makes it easy to see a board certified dermatologist online. You'll get treated immediately and your medications are delivered straight to your home. You simply fill out apostrophe's online questionnaire about your skin concerns and your medical history. Then you just snap a few selfies and your dermatologist will get back to you with a customized treatment plan tailored just for you. It's actually really cool. We both did it and it's so easy. I couldn't believe how easy it was. Yeah, just take a couple pictures and put it on their thing. Like, why would you ever want to go to the doctor? An dermatologist looks at them and gives you, I know, you I don't know why you would ever want to actually care. go to the doctor if you have this option. Um, it's really awesome. It's the future. It's the future. The best part is that Apostrophe offers topical and oral medications so you can treat your acne from the inside out and the outside in. Apostrophe treats acne and they can also help you hit your other skincare goals like reducing redness, wrinkles, and even dark spots. So for us, we've noticed so far that it feels really great on your skin when you put it on it feels like really smooth and it absorbs really nicely which is different from other uh types of moisturizers i've tried where it just kind of feels like i'm just rubbing it around on top of my skin but it's not (laughs) actually going inside of my skin so you can feel it absorbing into your skin really nicely um and the ingredients all look so amazing you know that they work uh if you you can read all the ingredients on there and they all are top notch really wonderful so get 15 dollars off your first visit with a board certified dermatologist at apostrophe.com com slash relax and use our code relax this code is only available to our listeners like i said to get started just go to apostrophe.com slash relax and click begin visit then use the code relax at sign up and you'll get 15 dollars off your dermatology visit once again what is it lovey i'm thinking it's relax that is the code you need to go to apostrophe oh right dot com slash relax yeah, you can't just type relax into your- yeah you need to go to apostrophe.com slash relax and use the code relax to get your dermatology visit for 15 dollars off and we thank apostrophe for sponsoring the podcast thank you okay lovey guess what mm. it's almost valentine's day the most important I knew holiday that. i've been counting down the days the most important holiday in our American history. So, what is the history of Valentine's Day? Well, the most important thing you need to know about Valentine's Day, listeners, is that I have a Valentine's Day show. 
No. I am doing a live concert from our house on Valentine's Day uh, at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You can get tickets. These are always out. very fun. They're really fun, yeah. It's Especially gonna be... when you live in the house where... Just chaos. <laughs> Just chaos in my There's house. There's uh, Colleen Ballinger. You're in it a bunch, by the way. I am? Yeah. I, I love how I'm finding this out right now. We're singing songs. We are, what songs are we singing? You're just going to have to wait and see. I'm not, are we really? Gonna be, yes. Don't make me sing. Don't make me sing. Uh, it's going to be really fun. But I usually um, kind of hate Valentine's Day. I think it's kind of uh, mean because I think it's like forces people to be like, oh, we need to celebrate our love. And it makes people like you get mad at each other if like don't get the right gifts or whatever. You do? Well, not us, but I just think like people. What do we do? Can you name anything we've done any Valentine's Day we've spent together? Can you think of it? Absolutely not. Yeah. Do you remember? I don't think we've ever done anything. Have we? I'm sure we do. I just don't remember. I know. I, I always try and get you like, you know. I'm sure we do some things. I don't know. We probably do. We just don't really care. Uh, about memories. <laughs> oh, sweet <laughs> memories. Um, uh, but also, it's just like, if you're single, it's just like a day to remind you that you don't have... So I think it's just a rude day. Like, we don't need this day. But it's... Um, here's the thing. I thought... I don't know much about this holiday. So I actually looked up some really fun facts about Valentine's Day so I can educate you, love. Fact. Kindergarten. I brought ninja turtles the single cards you remember the valentines you buy them at cvs oh, and yeah. like you have to they're kind of like perforated and you have to like rip them out of course and then you take a singular lollipop and you had to like slide it through the slot in the single card yeah ninja turtles cowabunga happy valentine's day pass them out to the class i remember being like like that would stress did you me ever out because then everybody's also collecting them and like what if you you know what's did the you message make, did you like, make uh your own like i loved making my valentine's day box that people put the card into Oh, you know what I mean? I like feel you like that to might decorate have, it. Yeah, no, not at all. I've, what? You didn't do this? I'm just they would just be a pie. I'd put them in my backpack. What do you mean, what? like a special box? Are you? Are you? A, what is wrong with Was you? Was this a class project or just something that you would Every, initiate? No. Are you? Am I losing my mind? Please tell me, everyone listening. Did you not do this? Is this not a thing? What? Also, is this in like college that you're doing this or high school? I'm sure I did it in college too because I'm a weirdo. <laughs> but like, no, all through elementary school, you make a Valentine's Day box like out of a shoe box or a tissue box, whatever. Was this and when you were homeschooled? No, this is real school and homeschooled. Okay, you know what? Rude to keep your phone. There's dinging. cat hair in my mouth. That's, okay, that's you my watch. Dinging it, things. It's my watch literally dinging. As it delivers your Taco Bell, yes. just so you know. Oh, it's here. Okay, we got to take a pause because I need to eat this. I'm so excited. Our yes. first special guest. Our first special guest is here, guys. It is... <laughs> Rachel Ballinger. Rachel just delivered me Taco Bell, Taco Bell. How's it going working thank for you, DoorDash? Thank you. It's great, great extra money. You're good. <laughs> Rachel, do you want to come sit here while I eat my Taco Bell and continue the podcast? <laughs> okay, because... Oh, this is actually great. So... <laughs> My sister is here. My sister just walked in the room. That Hi. is who Rachel is. So listen, he doesn't know about how on Valentine's Day you would decorate a box for your, like to get your Valentine's. Yeah, in. you decorate a little box and there's a little slit in it, and everyone comes around and puts. You know, Everybody in your thing. class would do this. Yeah. Yes, everyone does this. Are you, we were homeschooled? How did you not know about this? And we don't. No, we, we had to pass around like like these cheap CVS Valentine's he said Day cards. Just put them in his backpack. Yeah. Well, I didn't like make a special box for them. Dude, get crafting. Would you I just put them in like a Rite Aid bag? Like what? A plastic bag? Like where do you put your Valentine's? In my, in my Jansport or if I was rich, an LLB <gasps> oh, with Jansport. my initials on it. You are rich. Okay. No. Jansport's for rich, rich people. Rich was LLB. Jansport. Relax. Right. Relax. <laughs> Uh, rich people was LL Beans with their three Jansport initials on it. Rich. Am like I embroidered. crazy? No, Jansport was like Jansport's top tier. rich. That was like no, don't talk no, to no, those no, ones. No, Honey, no. try going to Kmart. That's the good stuff because you can get okay. You <laughs> think you're so cool with your Jansport? It's just literally a color and it says Jansport on it. Lame. If you go to freaking Kmart, you can get ones with like cats on it, or better yet, what was your backpack? Do you remember? Well, um, I remember many of my backpacks are usually bright colors. Uh, Rachel's had to have the most pockets. I had 18 pockets. Yes. And mine, yeah. but here, my favorite backpack ever, my grandma knitted for me. And it was, <gasps> yeah, do you remember this? I it was, it was amazing. Yellow. Yes, it was yellow. <laughs> and it had kitties on it. She like cross-stitched cats on the front flap. And it was, I just thought it was the coolest backpack in the world. I had a knitted <laughs> kitty cat it was backpack. brilliant. Okay, so um, anyway, thank you for that. You're welcome. Am I good? You're good. Okay, I love you. I didn't eat any of my Taco Bell, but oh well. I actually am going to take a second to eat a bite of Taco Bell. So uh, hold on. All right, I had a couple of bites of Taco Bell. It was disgusting. Are they paying us? 
No, You're mentioning them amazing. a lot. No, it's just delicious, but also disgusting. Um, all right, so here are some fun facts about Valentine's Day for you guys. Are you ready for this? Like the history of it? So, sort of. I'm just, interested. Okay, well. St. Valentine, right? It's more just like things I thought were interesting, so not really oh. the history of it. <laughs> okay. Candy hearts were uh-huh. originally medical lozenges. The ones that like say, be mine? Yeah, like the conversation hearts. Did they say stuff on them, like, feel better? Not at first. In 1847, Boston pharmacist Oliver Chase invented a machine that simplified the lozenge production process, resulting in the first candy-making machine, according to the Oxford Encyclopedia of Food and Drink in America. After identifying an opportunity to revolutionize the candy business, Chase shifted his focus to candy production. Isn't that interesting? (laughs) Fascinating. 1847. Yeah. That's a long time ago. I wasn't alive. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Okay. The chocolate box has been around for more than 140 years. Just in general, a box of chocolate? It's certainly longer. Lovey, listen. Which one? In addition to creating arguably the richest, creamiest, and sweetest chocolate in the market, Richard Cadbury, also, you know, Cadbury eggs and stuff. Uh, Of course. Uh, He also- I love, do you like Cadbury eggs? I don't. Okay. I'm sorry. They taste like wax. I hate that they only me. sell them once a year. It's like only around Easter that you can get one at yeah. your local. Yeah, I don't I don't I'm not a milk Walgreens chocolate g- gal. CBS. But he introduced the first box of Valentine's Day chocolates in 1868. Mhm. That's all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's a, I'm trying People to make Valentine's here Day for interesting. The facts and okay. you're giving them okay. the, the facts. Okay. Listen, I I think these things are interesting. Get over yourself, relax. There's a cool reason why We call people our Valentines, according to legend. (laughs) So not (laughs) fact or history. (laughs) When St. Valentine was imprisoned, he wrote a letter and signed it from your Valentine. Uh Uh, The signature caught on and now signing a love letter from a Valentine is a common practice. And I think I also read somewhere that signing your name on a Valentine is bad luck. Like you're not supposed to do that. Oh, you're supposed to say love your Valentine. Did you know? So I, you I can think, tell. Are you? I think I read that. I don't remember. I feel like you really love this, love. You seem <laughs> just entertained. The, just the facts. I think I heard this. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Um, I'm a historian. Okay, get into it. Right. X's and O's didn't always mean kisses and hugs. It's believed that signing with an X comes from the Middle Ages, when an X was used in the place of a signature because many people couldn't read or write. It also was a Christian symbol that represented the cross, and the idea is that the history of Christians kissing Kissing statues of Christ or kissing the Bible led to X getting its meaning as a modern day kiss. Interesting. Fascinating stuff. Okay. Off sorry you Valentine's hate Day history. Wikipedia page. Sorry you hate history, what, love. What Valentine's Day cards would you pass out to the class that you were? Um, mine were usually cats. Mine uh-huh. were usually had cats on them or like something pink. And would you just sign your name or would you like write a message? I just signed my name. Yeah. I didn't write a message. What if it was some like a, a boy you had a crush on or something? I never had crushes on boys when I did Valentine's. Okay. Never. I didn't. I think it's so fascinating when people are like, oh, I had a crush on someone when I was in kindergarten or like my first girlfriend was in third grade, like stuff like that. I'm like, what? I'm like, I didn't even think about that stuff until like high school. Uh huh. Like not even a little. Like I didn't, it didn't even cross my mind the idea of like having a crush on someone or a boyfriend. Noth- oh, okay. Nothing. Nothing. What did you did you give them to girls that you like had crushes on? Sure, yeah. Okay, I mean, but like, uh, elaborate. No, I mean like there. Why is there so much cat hair in my mouth? <laughs> Welcome to our house. <laughs> but for real. Yeah, well, I'm just saying like you. No, I would certainly not write anything special on the Ninja Turtle ripped up card. But you just like, give them like the good one. Yeah, the unbroken uh, lollipop <laughs> that came in the box with them. Did you ever have a girlfriend in elementary school? No. No, I, uh, no. I you didn't? So. Oh, in elementary school, yeah. <laughs> you did? I Yeah, but like, uh, yeah, in... Um, like what? I'm yeah, obsessed. but it was like, it was really like, um, uh, those re- quote unquote relationships, like they, they always had like a middleman. So you would say to your friend who would say to her friend... Like Eric thinks she's cute or whatever. And then they would relay back through their friend to your friend. Okay. And then there'd be like a note 
that would I feel like these notes were generally folded into it would be a, a lined notebook piece of paper, but it would be somehow folded into a a very tight triangle mm-hmm. that they would fold over. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh yeah, and, the football. Yeah, the football way. Yeah. And then so then you would open it and like it would say like yes, I'll be your girlfriend, and then you would never talk to them ever. How old are you when you were doing this? I think this the first time uh, this situation occurred to me. The I, first, so this multiple times this happened in your life. A couple, yeah, a couple, right? Like so, <laughs> <laughs> I think the first time this happened, I think was fourth grade. What was her name? I'm not going to out her on this podcast. Of course, name. she listens, just and a, everybody listens. Just a first all name. Know. Just a first name. Come on. No, I'm not going to say. What? What a ripoff. Why does it matter what her name is? Because I want to know. Uh, her name was Lisa. Was it? Yeah. Oh, that's cute. Um, and how then, long did this relationship last? <laughs> I think it would go like I, I, you know what I mean. It would last like a month or two. Wow, that's a lot for elementary but no, school. But never, we would never talk. We never talked. We uh, certainly not in person or on the phone. We just knew through <laughs> these these middlemen that like you guys were dating. You guys were dating. You know what I mean? Wait, Hardcore. So and then and then eventually, at least in my case, I would get. Another football note. Lovely. Not good. It's over. <gasps> oh, from from Lisa. Well, it right. She would give it. She gave it to her friend, who gave it to my friend, who then gave me the football note. Oh, what that a, uh, what a, I that it was that, to get that over? relationship that was terminated, oh, and no. I was I think <laughs> devastated. I believe that you're sensitive. I think uh, I think uh, I was absolutely uh, heartbroken. Oh. Lisa, um, <laughs> I feel like somehow that this will get back. Oh my to gosh, that's so cute! I never knew it. that. I never knew that story. That's so yeah. Cute. No, you're yeah. This is breaking news. I never had a Those boyfriend or anything notes. like it. That's so funny. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Ah, oh, I love that story. All right. Well, I have a couple more very interesting historical facts for you, love. Okay. <laughs> okay let's get yeah quick. Let's get back to wearing those. your heart on your sleeve is more than just a phrase. Okay. In the Middle Ages, young men and women drew names to see who their Valentine would be, and they would wear the name pinned to their sleeve for one week so everyone would know their true supposed feelings. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, I mean, I I basically listened to the first half of that sentence Wait, and then no, tuned I think out it's interesting. back to, okay, I was thinking about you know Lisa. What, love, I think <laughs> it's interesting that there's a phrase that we've always heard, like, you wear your heart on your sleeve. I didn't know that's why we said that. I honestly did not listen to the second half of what okay, you were saying. Okay, so you know what? I'm not going to repeat it. don't even know what you're talking about. Here's another one. Are you ready? Sure. In the 1800s. 1800- <laughs> In the 1800s, physicians frequently advised their patients to eat chocolate to ease their lovesickness. Uh huh. Isn't that crazy? Is that why you're eating chocolate every day? Uh, no, I just like it. But I think that's interesting that doctors used to prescribe it. Don't you think that's interesting? Well, I'm sure they were like, yeah, you should probably eat some chocolate as they like chain smoked in their doctor's office. Like, okay, I've got two more. They did not have the best advice, I feel like, back then. Yeah, that's true. Okay, ready for this one? This uh-huh. one you'll love. The name February, whoa, I just said that so weird. <laughs> I think that's a very hard month to say. Feb- it, well, everyone says it February, February, but it is spelled February. Right. Anyway. But like, it's, I find it best in conversation to just throw that word away. Yeah. February. You know what I mean? Okay. Don't, what? You just said Furby for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Furby. <laughs> the name February derived from a festival <laughs> that I cannot pronounce, uh, this tradition at this festival, in which boys would run through crowds of people swinging strings made from goat skins. The goat skins were called Februa, and if the strings touched a girl, it was said that she would have healthy children when she grew up. So goat skin... Uh-huh. Is the reason like slapping goat skin on young girls is the reason? Oh, is that February. where the term slapping goat skin comes from? <laughs> Shut up. Hey yo, we slapped some goat. That's Ew, it, stop. no, it does not sound good. Okay, one more guess. Episode title: Slapping Goat Skin. Okay, get over yourself. Okay. okay, ready? Who do you think receives the most Valentine's cards? Like a genre of person. Um, who? Like, I don't like know. Like moms Pop or dads. Stars. Or, no, no, no. Like moms, dads, kids. You uh, know. Moms. My mom still sends me Valentine's That's cards. That's really cute. Yeah. Um, actually, the number one genre of human is teachers. They receive the most uh, Valentine's course. cards. As they should in that yes. sinceriteness. If Followed you're a teacher by, and you're listening, I salute I, you. I agree. Teachers are amazing. 
followed by kids, and then mothers. And guess what's last on the list is wives. You would think uh-huh. wives would be number one. Noted. Um, I, you're, you always give me cards. You're very I, sweet. I generally like make you a card. Yeah, you we're. I think we're good in that department. I, I haven't. I honestly have not bought you a Valentine's Day gift. Are we doing that? I have. Not. I have. I, I have, have something like in mind that I've been. Ah, oh, Frank! On. What? That means I have to get you something. I haven't <laughs> oh, even thought frick. about it. Well, no, it's not like a, you got me a present. I'm like making a little thing. Oh gosh! And you're making it. Yeah. Now I gotta make you a thing. It's, uh, it's oh. sentimental. Are you serious? I'm making you a sentimental gift. Can you not? Because I don't have the room in my brain to do this you got 10 days you got i got, you got a, few a couple days. days okay well okay well this Better is gonna on stress Amazon me out guys see what's prime this is gonna stress <laughs> me out i'm gonna lose sleep over this which is you know it's a good you do that th- i lose sleep over stressful things and this is very stressful and so that is why i'm really glad we got a new mattress which oh my gosh it's so crazy i was just about to talk about this sponsor we have for this week oh he- are you good you talk about Helix? Yes, uh-huh. Helix. Listen, guys, the stresses of life, there's more stresses in life than just Valentine's Day cards. <laughs> uh, there's so many stresses, especially in the last year, and they have really made it harder for all of us to sleep. That is why I am so excited to be sponsored by Helix, because one thing that was not helping us sleep was a horrible mattress, which is what we had until now. Helix Sleep has a quiz that takes just two minutes to complete and matches your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. Why would you buy a mattress made for someone else? With Helix, you're getting a mattress that you know will be perfect for the way that you sleep. Everyone is unique and Helix knows that, so they have several different mattress models to choose from. They have soft and medium and firm, all different types of mattresses, mattresses that cool you down if you sleep hot, and even a Helix plus mattress for plus size folks we took the helix quiz we did and we were matched with a medium firm mattress because we both are side sleepers side sleepers opposite direction of each <laughs> yeah, other. i know we we go <laughs> Back, butt to butt butt to butt yeah <laughs> butt to butt like we are sharing air folks so oh <laughs> um and <laughs> sorry that was a horrible thing to say so we do love it it's a huge upgrade from what we used to have which was um just an old call them out old, no i'm not gonna call them out but it was an old gross mattress and now we got a nice one and flynn loves it he loves to um Jump Wake on us it. up on it very early. <laughs> yes, he sure does. <laughs> Delivery and setting up is so fast and easy, and it's really cool to watch it come out of the box. It's very impressive seeing how they get this huge mattress in this tiny box, and it's been awesome getting to watch these unboxing videos from so many of you who also found the Helix mattress of your dreams. So if you're looking for a mattress, you just take the quiz, you order the mattress that you are matched to, and the mattress comes right to your door shipped for free. You don't ever need to go to a mattress store again. Helix is awesome, but you don't need to take my word for it. Helix was awarded the number one best overall mattress pick of 2020 and by GQ and Wired Magazine. That's a lot of good reviews. You know what I'm saying? Just go to helixsleep.com slash RCE. Take their two-minute sleep quiz, and they'll match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. They have a 10-year warranty, and you get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. They'll even pick it up for you if you don't love it. But I promise you will. Helix is offering up to two hundred dollars off. Whoa. I know, two hundred dollars off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at HelixSleep.com/rce. Pretty exciting stuff. You know what else is very exciting? PP breaks. PP breaks. I got pee pee. You know, you got to go pee pee. That is the da da pee pee. Whoa, you need to stop with that weirdness. <laughs> we are going to take a pee pee break. And while we're doing a pee pee break, guys, we have a special surprise for you. It is Flynn's truck, truck of, of the day. day. Flynn's truck of the day. Oh, truck of the day. Truck of the day. Flynn's truck of the day. <laughs> All righty, it's time to find out the truck of the day. Flynn, let's talk about it. Truck of the day. Truck of the day. Truck of the day. Yay, yeah. beautiful singing. What truck are you holding right now, Flynn? Steer. A skid steer. Whoa. Hey, Flynn, can you tell me what a skid steer does? <laughs> Mama, oh, she... yes, of course. Sorry. Yes, what does the skid steer do? 
Oh, that's really fascinating. <laughs> a skid steer is like a, a, a more compact bulldozer, backhoe, like all-in-one kind of thing. So it's, I think, generally used for more home construction than it is for commercial construction. Would you agree, Flynn? <laughs> He's pretty much agreeing with me. What color is a skid steer? Yellow. It's yellow. How many wheels does it have? Can you count them? One, seven, eight, ten. One, seven, eight, ten. It actually has four, but that was really good counting. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Clint's truck of the I adore him. And the he's best. so the best kid and person. And just, he's the best. Truck enthusiast. He's amazing. Genuinely. Genuinely, he loves a skid steer right now. Uh-huh. Uh, but he also, I feel like, is really into crane trucks these days. He doesn't discriminate. Uh, no, no, he, he really loves, loves them all. All trucks. Yeah, he's he's amazing. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's truck of the day. So you know, Lovey, you always make fun of me for not knowing TV shows, not knowing movies, not knowing sports. I don't make fun of you. I'm just um, shocked by your existence. But there are things you don't know. That you should probably uh, know. I don't know if that's true. Well, there's, I mean, that's true. <laughs> I do have a bachelor's in theater, <laughs> so. Well. No one's ever asked to see it, but uh, it exists and costs a lot of money. I thought it would time. be fun to check and test your knowledge of internet slang. What I'm does gonna... internet even stand for? Internet. Oh, uh, see? So I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to, some of these are easy. And I think you'll know. And some okay. of them, I don't know. Oh, this know. is exciting. Uh, yeah. No, I'll see uh, sometimes like a, a fan of yours will tweet something. I mean, I'll be like, what, is, what, is, what does that acronym mean? Yeah. I've definitely Googled internet acronyms before. But like even then, like you still you can't find the answers to what the kids are saying these days. Like, you know. Yeah. These these kids. What are these? We're it's, so uh, parents. It's so weird. All right. Yeah. Are you ready? You'll know this one. Okay. Snatched. Uh snatched yeah you know this one i say this i feel like um this is going to mean like skinny or like uh, like tight waisted is that Um, that something like that no it's not about being skinny i i think you've probably heard it in that context because like you know a lot of times if like i'm watching rupaul's drag race or something that's what i was gonna say like watching rupaul with like you and Corey, i was like oh yeah there's lots of snatching and things. it's like if they're wearing a corset, we're like, ooh, that waist is snatched. And so like right, that's so probably sk- where you so think sk- yeah. that's from. Am I wrong? Mm, it's not about being skinny. It's just like it's like looks amazing. Like on like you the outfit is amazing. Oh. Like snatched is like, girl, your outfit is snatched. Your makeup snatched, honey. They then what's you're who, always snatched. what's with the snatching snatched. of of wigs? Are wigs snatched? Well, you can just say wig. Like if like something's impressive, you just go like wig. wig. Like if someone's like an impressive singer, you'd be like, ah, oh, wig. What or does like, wig mean? What do you mean? Like I'm impressed. Like you stole my wig. Like you snatched my weave. Like so, taking st- someone else's wig. Is it your own wig? Yeah, like someone <laughs> took your wig. Like they blew your wig off, kind of thing. I think. I mean, I actually don't know the actual definition of oh. that, but like, um, I'm pretty sure wig is just like you go like, ah, oh, wig. Like when you're impressed. What about this? Do you know this cap or no cap? Have you heard people say that? Cap or no cap? Like, yeah, like a cap. hat. Like a hat, yes. What do you mean? You like a capital that? letter? Have you really not heard that one? Like if you put it in capital, that's serious? Like all caps? Do you really not know that one? Is that where it comes from, all caps? I don't know what it comes from, but to cap is to lie about something. What? And no cap means to tell the truth. I need to know the origin. No cap basically means they're they're not lying or capping like they did something. Sometimes people write it Popping like... Popping caps? I don't know. That food was good, no cap. Who's speaking like this? If you're if you're a out there people, speaking like this, I don't. But mm, yes, I don't know. How about low key and high key? You've heard that. Yeah, like low key, like keep it on the low, the low low, no, low down. What? what? You don't know what low key, high key? Like, oh my god, I I love that food, low key. Like you're keeping it a secret that you love that food, no, or, like, or like yeah, yeah, yeah. Between yeah, yeah. me and you, I love. Like it's kind of like you'd say it maybe if you're Taco talking Bell. about a guilty pleasure. Like yeah. I actually love Taco Bell. Low yeah, key. well, I don't think that's it, that's like you. But what about high key? Slang. Do you know what high key means? High key is like, um, see, I'm a 
What's my vocal range? What would you consider? I'd it? say you're probably a baritone. Yeah, I'm like a baritone, and a high key would be like no, a C no. sharp minor. <laughs> Stupid. Uh, <laughs> no, high key is like when you like. So for me, I wouldn't say I like Taco Bell low key because it's not secret. I so like, high I'd key be like, is the opposite of low key. It's like I love Taco Bell high key. Like high key, I'm obsessed. Like that. You know what I mean? Like, is like you're high key obsessed? You like, with like openly. The, the affectation of your speaking voice saying these things, uh, it works. <laughs> I think it works for you. You'll, I feel like I'm shocked you don't use this next one because it's a very you word. Okay. Yeet. Yeet. Do you know this one? Like cream of yeet. <laughs> what <laughs> like, cream of yeet? <laughs> yeet thins. You just yeet uh, thins. I am. <laughs> So excited because that has to be our next merch. <laughs> Cream of Yeet. If that is not Yeet our next thins. merch, I am suing <laughs> us. I'm suing myself. Uh, Cream of Yeet is the best thing I've ever heard. What? <laughs> what? Yeet? You haven't heard Yeet? Is it like something to do with like Kanye, like Yeezy? I don't know, but it's like when you, you okay, so there's a you couple ways. You should know because you're explaining these to me. Well, no, I don't know where it came from, but I know there's a couple ways. Like I've, I've heard people say it like you yeet something across the room, like yeet, like when you throw something, you say like yeet. yeet. Oh, or, uh, I like that. Or um, I'll use that. I'll use that for so like this says, throwing it, a used diaper at a little yeet. trash can. I'll be like yeet. Like, for example, when I go online uh -huh. and like tweet something and then I leave the internet right away, they'll be like, clean yeeted out of here real fast. Like Colleen is. A I don't like that. I don't like yeeted. I like that's fine. Yeet, but I don't like. Ah, uh, she yeeted. Yeah, because so that sounds like. I, it's it's yeast. a verse. It's a versatile word, <laughs> mostly used either as a verb or to narrate the process of discarding things at a high velocity. Like yeet, you've never heard yeet. That definition was so textbook. I know it was really weird. What is that from like Urban Dictionary? Probably. Or something? I don't know. I just feel like it'd be better explaining these things to me. All right, ready? Simp. Do you know what a simp? Is like the a, Sims? No, simp with a P. I don't know. It's not a Sims thing. You don't know what it is to simp over someone? Uh, you simply adore them. You that's right. Is it? Is well, that I where don't it comes know from? if that's where it came from, but basically the modern way of calling someone a schmoozer or a people pleaser. Simp is mostly used to describe people, generally those who identify as male, who are willing to do anything to get somebody to fall in love with them. So it's like when you're like. So it's not a good term. No, nah, it's kind of oh, like. He's such a simp. Yeah. He's trying he's so hard. On, yeah, he's simping over her. He's such a simp. Or are you a simp? So when people call you, so if someone calls me a simp, it's not good, huh? Well, no, if you're simping over me, that's fine. Can I simp over you? Yeah. Are you simping, simping me? Are you simp? Are you a simp for I'm, me? I'm big simping. What about IRL? In real life. Yes. Do you know what that means though? Like why someone would say IRL? Because they're talking about something that's in real life as opposed to just on the internet? Uh, yes. Is anything specific? Yeah, when you're like talking about your yeet, when you're yeeting. <laughs> no, it's it's a person. I, so it's like your your IRL. Like, oh, oh, oh my gosh, my IRL saw found my Twitter account. Oh, oh, so it differentiates between like your your real life human your, friends, your IRL, and, and your, your and your uh, your simp's. Yeah, someone who's doesn't know you online, and then there's people you know from offline. You know what I mean? Like a so like you know, someone like me who's not online much. Am I your IRL? Are You're you my all the things. If you guys want to follow us on our social medias and tell us more internet slang, you can. Uh, we have a Twitter. So you can follow us. Relax underscore podcast. Is that our Twitter? Actually, maybe I should know it before. Oh, that's it's right. I was right. Oh, good. We also have a YouTube channel. Quit yeeting at me. Uh, so if you guys want Simp. to watch the YouTube channel and subscribe, that would be great. We have one of those too. Mm-hmm. And listen to us on all the cool. podcast thingies that you listen to podcasts on. And we are so happy that we're able to do this. This is so fun for us to be able to like hang out every week for like an hour. And we're able to do that because of you guys and because of our amazing sponsors. And we're really excited about the next one, which is Function of Beauty. I've been using Function of Beauty for a long time. Really love it. And listen up, guys. Friends, don't let friends live with anything less than amazing hair. And you guys, you're my friends. And I love you. So I'm looking out for you right now, and I want your hair to be happy. Function of Beauty is the world leader in customizable beauty, offering precise formulations for your hair's specific needs. Here's how you get started. First, you take a quick but thorough quiz to tell them a little bit about your hair type and your hair goals, such as lengthen, volumize, oil control, stuff like that. I put in, I wanted my hair to grow, and I have damage, so I need a damage control. Mm -hmm. um, and I know 
Mr. Stockland over here. Did I tell you that I did, did it? Just did it. Because he heard me talking about it last time. Yeah, on... they advertised last time on it, and I was jealous that I hadn't yeah. done it. Yeah. So uh, I talked about it so wonderfully last time. that You fine, sold me. Yeah. I know. Eric went and got it. And so what do you remember what you put in your quiz? Uh, yeah, I think it was like, I want that frizz. You don't want that frizz? Anti-frizz. Anti-frizz. Yeah. Anti the frizz. Uh, I don't know. I, I put in some things and I know that they were like sending an email that was like a scientist is now. One of the world's yes. top scientists was like, screw the vaccine. I'm going to work on this <laughs> shampoo <laughs> ingredients for Eric's frizz. Frizzy hair. Uh, yeah. And I also know that I put in no dye so that it's just. Uh, yeah, of course. So I was like, I don't know if the dye is bad. I'm not saying it's bad, but like, cause you can get yeah. lots of different colors. Yeah. That is an option. You can go fragrance or dye free. Yeah. Um, but because your hair changes with the season, you can change your hair goals before every shipment. So every time you are about to get a new shipment, you oh, can change to, it up. So then after that, you get to choose your color and your fragrance. And then Function's team determines the perfect blend of ingredients, which is the email that you got. Okay. They bottle up your formula and deliver it right to you. Every ingredient Function of Beauty uses is vegan and cruelty free, and they never use sulfates or parabens. You can also go completely silicone free if you like. There are over 54 trillion possible formulations, and Function of Beauty has over 50,000 five star reviews. That's a lot of five star reviews. And you're That's one crazy. of them. Of course. And Function of Beauty offers completely personalized formulas for body and skin care as well. So you can customize your beauty routine from hair to toe. Never buy off the shelf just to be disappointed ever again. Go to functionofbeauty.com slash relax to take your quiz and save 20% on your first order. That applies to their full range of customized hair, skin, and body products. Go to functionofbeauty.com slash relax relax to let them know we sent you and to get 20% off your order function of beauty.com slash relax truly guys we both use and love this well and, I haven't got it yet well I use it I know that you're excited but I'm anticipating about it. this shampoo bottle that says function of Eric on it yeah it's going to get into that I thought you already had it because you told me that you got it so I, oh, I just you filled out the uh the quiz um, so yeah, you guys, if you want to support the podcast the best way is um, by using these codes and checking this stuff out if it interests you. So make sure to go do that. Now, I have something very fun that I'm excited about right now, okay? Basically, we've got Valentine's Day coming up. And when oh, I... Oh, right. Valentine's Day will be a couple days after this. Yeah. Um, so when... Drops. When I um, ask on the Twitters what we should talk about, most people are always like, your love story, your first kiss. They just want to know all this information about our relationship, how, you know, just how in love we are, you know? So I thought it would be fun to do this little quiz because I was like, we've got a pretty solid relationship, I would say. Don't you think? Yeah, but I'm, I'm a bad test taker, but okay. Well, it's not like a test. It's oh, okay. basically, I, I found this thing that says, okay, this is, I just, I haven't read it yet, but I do think this title was funny. Here are 21 hilarious questions to ask your husband, wife, boyfriend, or girlfriend, or we don't do titles, partner. So I don't know what this could mean. Oh, you haven't looked at the questions beforehand? No. Oh, I thought okay. it'd be fun to do this on air. So okay. we're going to ask each other hilarious questions to see how well we know each other. Oh. So are you ready for this? Yep. Wow. I just read the first one. Love? Uh-huh. Spoiler alert. Not funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's supposed to be hilarious, not funny. Oh yeah, that's true. It, it is, is hilarious. A distinction. You ready? It's gonna be you're gonna laugh so hard at this one. Okay. All right. The first hilarious question is would you rather I be completely hairless or mm. as hairy as a gorilla? Body hair is hilarious. <laughs> what is it what do they mean? I don't know. Hair, hairless. Is, this is the worst. I would say, or as hairy as a as a, like a gorilla, the animal. Yes, they're covered in hair. <laughs> <laughs> like their entire bodies and and faces are. Uh, I would say, like I mean, are we losing eyebrows and yeah, <laughs> completely hairless. So okay. you'd be completely snatched. Uh, I mean, if that's what you think <laughs> snatched is, Did then I, use I, it guess, uh, I think uh, so, but. Uh, yeah, I would say I would say hairless. I would say that I... too for you. Like, what a weird. That's not funny. Uh, okay. Nope. Who would play your love interest in a movie, aka me? So you have to tell me. Oh, that's who funny. You want to play me? Well, it's funny in because your movie. you played my love interest in a television program. Yes. 
that was I did. That so streams. who would you want to play me? Who's a famous person that you would want to oh, play me? Oh, there's See? no way this is good. <laughs> this is hilarious. <laughs> it is to me. Uh, you, you play yourself. No, it can't be me. So that's cheating. I have to say somebody? Do yeah. I, can I we skip this one or what? Nah. Uh, <laughs> who is playing you? Yeah. And I have to, it can't be you? Yes. <laughs> We've gone over this three times now. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know. There's nobody I can think of. Come on. Uh, Dua Lipa. Oh, that's a good one. Is she an actress? <laughs> I'm sure she can act. Does she look like, she doesn't look like, she's way prettier than me, but that's no interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Why okay. was that the name that came out of my mouth? I don't know, but I'm for it. Like that, I feel like that was a good answer. It's, she's transitioning to uh to film work. Is she? For this movie, she is. Alrighty. For the she's, movie she's in my head. Wants to start being a. Is Dua Lipa your thing? No, I just. That's what came to mind. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> oh, next so one. <laughs> okay. Ready? Here's the next one, which is really funny. You're okay. gonna laugh so hard at this one. Would you rather endure childbirth or wear high heels for an entire day? <laughs> Who wrote this? A man. Yeah. For sure a man. Because w- how are those two things on the same level? I would say high heels. Well, obviously you would say high heels. What do you mean? Like... Who would choose Obvious. childbirth? Over over literally anything. Over any like of course you would choose high heels. What the heck is this? Okay. What do you think is your best physical feature? That's I that makes me uncomfortable. I don't like saying like what I think is like. Well, what, the yeah, best what on would me. you say then? About you? No, about you. My best physical feature? Uh-huh. Mm, definitely my weenuses. Your weenuses. This is a weenus, love. Oh. That, a weenus is the skin on it's your elbow. It's a podcast, elbow. love. Make a sound with it. It's a podcast. You can't make a sound with elbow skin. You can't make a sound with a weenus? I'm trying to. You can't. It doesn't make a sound. That was the worst thing I've ever seen. Um, what's uh, your best physical feature? I don't know. You tell me. I don't, I don't, I don't. You got a pretty good weenus. <laughs> <laughs> what were your nicknames growing up, including the ones you didn't want to stick? Most people, like in uh, grade school, high school, called me by my last name, Stocklin. They mm-hmm. would say that, which then would became shorter with just Stocks. Mm-hmm. So, like, a, uh, some of my close friends just call me Stocks. I think my um, AOL instant messenger name was like Stocks and Bonds, just because it was the only thing I could think of that had Stocks mm-hmm. with it. Well, mine was I'm a cat lover 13. So, was it really? Yeah. Did we message? Did we find each other in a chat room, you think, and not know it? I didn't go into chat rooms as a kid. Me neither. Yeah, right. <laughs> Miss, you, someone, I knew you were talking to Lisa late at night. Stop. Why do you keep bringing her up? Jealous. I am jealous. All right. If I let you dress me, what uh-huh. would I wear on our next date? That's a Your good question. own merch. Uh, <laughs> I, do, I, I buy you clothes. Yeah, so say, explain my next outfit for our next date. For our next date? Mm-hmm. Where are we going? Doesn't matter. We're not going anywhere. What do you just say something you think I would look nice in? A diaper. I mean, okay. That's a weird uh thing you got. I got going. a diaper thing. <laughs> he does not have a diaper <laughs> thing. He's joking. Um Did you think that they would believe that? Why did you have to like fight that so <laughs> hard? Disclaimer, love, he doesn't. Yes, like, look, like me thinks thou doth protest have too much. You ever experienced people on the internet oh they would, that would be like taken out of context 100 percent. i had to put a disclaimer in uh, okay so yes uh i don't know close like cool ones like what Explain you know it. like some uh some jeans and a crop like crop tops i'm saying what not what i wear on a daily basis what would you pick like out sneakers for me? high top sneakers and, you'd uh, want me to wear high top sneakers yeah the high heels you know like high heel high top sneakers yeah i'm sure they make those what are you saying? You're not taking this seriously. Oh, was this, oh, oh, I didn't realize Come we were taking on. this seriously. I don't know how to dress you with my mind. <laughs> I'm doing the opposite. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> this is the worst thing I've ever done. So we're going to find something different because this is this not is working. This is our thing, though, love. Okay. We always do internet love quizzes. That are the most hilarious questions you'll ever read, yeah. and they're not funny at all. All right, so Eric found a couple of funny uh, relationship quizzes. Which one do you want to do? I want to do which famous couple are you? Which famous couple are we? Ready? Yeah, we're going to do what this quiz. What famous couple are you quiz? 
Okay, let's try it out. This is probably going to infect my phone somehow. Do you feel like there is clearly a front runner in the relationship, or do you see you and your partner as equal? Well, we well, might have different answers than that, but I, I would think we're equal. Okay. Re okay, relax. Read the options. There's definitely an imbalance, but it's respected and supported. Okay. There's equal greatness. That's what I think. We consider ourselves equal and don't really focus on what others think. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of a power struggle no. about who is on top. I don't think that. I would say B, but you say A. Well, I don't know. I mean, you're obviously like you're the number one influencer in the world. <laughs> we put B. Which of these best describes you as a couple? Mm. Pretty and perfect? A dominant force? The underdogs? Outwardly perfect, but inward inwardly a mess. <gasps> who would say that? Um, I would say a dominant force. For sure. What three words best describe your significant other? Loving and funny and supportive? Wait, but which one? Who are we explaining? Who? Are you explaining me or am I explaining you? I think you? Just, we'll just have to come to a consensus oh, that we're taking it at the same time. Uh, lovey, funny, and loving, funny, and supportive, creative, driven, and committed, selfless, loving, and family oriented, or beautiful, caring, and kind hearted. These all are just of them. words. It's yeah. just like a word jumble. They but were they're like, all of them. You're all of them. How do they? There's no all of the above answer, so you have to pick one. What? I guess C, selfless, loving, and family oriented. Okay. What of these is most important in your relationship? Laughter and having fun together, unconditional love and support, family and happiness, our children, our image. Why does that go together? This is a horrible, horrible Our children quiz. and our image is like the same. Okay. Um, which You pick this one. Which one do you think is most important in our relationship? Family and happiness? Yeah, I love that. This is the dumbest quiz. This is going to tell us what celebrity couple we're most like. I, yeah, I don't understand either. Are you more successful than your partner or vice versa? So wait, how do we answer this? I think it's just starting sh you, you, you answered this one. Because, well, I just we like, both have our moments of success. Yeah, do that We one. don't really measure su success that way. Exactly. We're pretty equal. My partner is definitely more successful. I, I mean, I would, I, you know. We don't measure. I think our, you're pretty successful, love. But so and are I'm you. I'm a piece of garbage. No, but we don't really measure success that way. That's stupid. Okay. Okay. Oh my god, how many questions are in this freaking ten? Quiz? Ten of ten. Uh, have you ever felt your relationship might not work? No, not for a millisecond. Have you? What? Literally not for a single millisecond ever. Yeah. No. I mean, what? Yeah. No. No. Wait. Not a chance. No, we are truly soulmates. Yeah. Not an option. Obviously. Okay. Who are we? <gasps> <gasps> what this is so rude. i love this that's great we are neil patrick harris and david bertka <laughs> are they happy together i think so i think they adopted twins or something oh, that's great good for them yeah neil patrick harris is a magician uh-huh doogie hauser himself yes that's how i know him yeah anyway <laughs> that was fascinating you guys i really hope you all enjoy this that is great because now me and you just get quiz. to talk just me and you because like certainly no one's no, no one's listening, listening now so point. now we can just literally talk about whatever we want yeah um and it'll be nice do we need groceries it'll be uh Should we order some groceries? maybe i don't know paper towels i'm just excited for this moment between us right now because it's going to be nice and calm oh love. i see what you did there what did i do there love I think they're one of our sponsors. Oh, you know what? You're right, guys. I am so excited to talk about our next sponsor because one of the most powerful ways to improve your overall health and happiness is to get a good night's sleep. This is something I lack every night of my life. And so that is why I'm so excited. And we have so many sponsors <laughs> <laughs> about sleeping and help anything that we can possibly What's use our demographic? or do yeah. to help us sleep. And the Calm app is something we've talked about a lot because we both genuinely love and use this all the time. It is such an awesome app and um, it really has helped us calm down in stressful situations. So that's why we are so excited to partner with Calm. This app is designed to help you ease stress and get the best sleep of your life. And when you relieve anxiety and improve your sleep, you feel better in every part of your life. Calm has a whole library of programs designed for healthy sleep, like soundscapes, guided meditations, and over 100 sleep stories narrated by soothing voices. They have over 85 million people around the world using the Calm app to take care of their minds and get better sleep. If you guys go to calm.com, com slash rce which stands for relax colleen and eric 
R C E. Oh, 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 I get it. You'll get a limited time offer of forty percent off a Calm Premium subscription, which includes hundreds of hours of programming. Get the Calm app and experience a transformation in the way you sleep. We use this all the time. I use it on nights where I'm having really bad insomnia and cannot sleep at all. I'll end up just putting on a guided meditation and I will let someone just soothe my brain to sleep because um, sometimes nothing else works and this is the only thing. And Eric is always using it. I walk in on him using it all the time. Yeah, I'm like addicted at this point. Yep. I need it. I need it. I need the guidance. So for listeners of the show, Calm is offering a special limited time promotion of 40% off a Calm premium subscription at calm.com slash RCE. That's 40% off unlimited access to Calm's entire library and new content is added every week. So get started today at calm.com slash RCE. That is calm.com slash RCE. Library is a hard word to say, huh? Yeah, I guess so. Like I, I watched you. I could see your brain go through the whole library process. And I, was, it, I had a line this week when I was working where I had to say the word library, and it like, it's like library. Hmm. It was a hard word to say. I don't know that I it feel, is. It's not library. I feel like your mouth trips up libra- library. It's not like a. Um, I feel like you might have been one of those kids that called it a library until someone made fun of you for it. And now this is something that hurts you. Library. library. Did you say library, library? as a kid? Uh, I might have. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So earlier we were talking about how we don't remember if we've ever done anything for Valentine's Day. So we took a little break and I looked through my phone to see what we did last year and the year before. And so I have, during the break, Eric's never looking at his phone. And so I text him photos of what we did last Valentine's Day and the Valentine's Day before. But Hmm. in searching for it, I found um, two days before Valentine's Day, two years ago, the most magical thing that has ever happened to us happened. What? February 12th, 2019. Flynn was, he was a tiny baby. He's only a couple months old. He had really bad colic, okay? And it was the first time we saw him smile or heard him laugh. Oh, really? And that he, was right before It was February Valentine's 12th. Oh, wow. And he didn't do it again for a very long time. He had colic. He was, it was very sad. It was very hard. Oh, that's so great. But I just want to remember this with you because the oh. sound of his first laugh is wild. And we both, this, if you're watching, you'll be able to see the video. But if you I think my crowning achievement in life will be making you're the him first laugh to make him for laugh. the first time. Uh, and, and, uh, this is honestly my favorite video ever. It's like, and it's the best sound. It will be sound. my favorite video ever for my whole It's life. the cutest little giggle I've ever heard in my entire life. Yeah. And we, luckily I was filming it. And right when I turned off the camera, we both started crying. And like <laughs> high-fiving and hugging each other. Like, cause it had been so hard. Like it was uh, a really co- hard couple do months. Do people know what colic is and what? Yeah, I, mean, I think so. I don't think even doctors know what colic is. They just—it just essentially mean your kid is—is is just. Uh, he just—he cried twenty four seven, and there's yeah. nothing we could do, and it was really sad, and it was really hard, and he did have colic for another month or two, but, um, you know, at least we got to hear that one laugh. I remember that night saying that one laugh. That's all we, yeah. That's all we needed. And now we can keep going, like, and so I want you guys to hear it. Um, you'll hear Eric trying to make him laugh, and then I'm literally screaming smile in his yeah, face. He's and then you'll hear the cutest giggle you've ever heard in your life. Ready? <laughs> Can you do it? Can you do it? Your... <laughs> it's so cute. Look at his little face, lovey. <laughs> That little sound, really that great. little, <laughs> it's like <laughs> what made us survive. I know. Colic, that one second. Like, I feel like it's the only thing that got us through those I couldn't believe it. I didn't know what his face looked like smiling. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Almost. Or like, we, like, there would be a couple times when he was like asleep. You'd be like, oh my God, he was, he smiled when he was asleep. But like, it, it was so. Yeah. When he started smiling, I remember we both yeah. said that, like, we don't even recognize him. And now yeah, it changed it's the... all he does. Yeah. It's now so he's great. just the happiest little guy. But anyway, that happened, um, two years ago, right before Valentine's day. So I sent you a couple pictures of, it was, these are the photos. I will describe them to you and show them on the screen. If you're watching of our Valentine's day 
two years ago and then last year okay so we'll start with last year what these are the photos i found so that which i don't remember it's a photo oh, yeah. of beautiful roses chocolates wine champagne, i got you all this stuff and a pink bag well here's the thing i don't know i think i got it for you no i got this for you because but the bag that looks like my handwriting on that card it's not. It says it says lovey, and that's my handwriting. Oh darn it! So you yeah, no, it's it wasn't you. <laughs> I did this, but I remember, yeah, because I remember where I got the flowers, and I got you chocolate covered. Okay, well, he got me a very sweet, amazing. I'm a romantic simp. What can I say? But I don't remember if I got you anything. Did I use that right? I don't know. Uh, now look at the next. Swipe to the next photo. That's the other photo I have for oh. Valentine's Day, which is a photo of me dressed as Miranda, um, and I've shoved my face into a that's Cupid. Funny stuffed animals so those are the two pictures that I have was from so last nice year. of you to do that for me it really uh, yeah so i don't have any photos or anything of us from last year so i don't know what we did on that's Bounty just Day. our cat's vagina that's two years ago <laughs> <laughs> and that's oh. two years ago me so there's a photo of the cat like spread eagle and then there's a photo of me miserable and pumping in the middle of the night on valentine's day like that's i love that you can see like. the clock on our tv and it says it's one, in the morning, one in the morning right you. and i am pumping miserable Oh, there's you know? the things over his changing table. Uh-huh. Yeah. So uh, that's funny from our it's Valentine's great photo Day. Of you. And then the other thing that happened on Valentine's Day. This was Valentine's Day? Day? The other thing that happened on Valentine's Day two years ago was Flynn's first blowout. Flynn had his very first poo explosion when uh, it was Valentine's Day two years ago. So I just really enjoyed those photos, love. And um, Yeah, there's something very sweet about seeing a child's... Um, excrement come through his white clothes i just i don't know i feel like those were all like so us like yeah. all those photos it's are like memory, it's exactly yeah. i literally our Valentine's yeah days. i really like, really remember that moment yeah eric and i have never really felt the need to like go all out for anniversaries valentine's days and so, what we just showed a picture of like of, of me buying no, that you is amazing wine and chocolates and roses and i'm just saying that like that's not something that you only do on valentine's day right that's something that like i feel like you're very good about doing stuff like that for me all the time. And I feel like I try really hard to... Are you going to cry? <laughs> I'm crying. <laughs> um, no, I, I feel like we both take care of each other and um, do good at like celebrating each other often. And so that's why we don't put so much pressure on the holidays that people would care about. Do you know what I mean? Because we're kind of like... It's for greeting card companies. Man. No, it's not even that. I think it's fun to celebrate things. I love a holiday. But um, as far as like anniversaries and things like that, we're kind of like, eh, I don't know. You know yeah. what I mean? It's kind of like, well, you're cool every day. You you're are the cool best every, every day. day. There is a note. Well, we have a we have a notepad in our shower, and we write yeah, each other new. notes. If, so every time one of us takes a shower, we see like a love note to the other. Like, and uh, yeah, we're. I don't know how that works. How it's like it's like a paper that can get wet, and you can write on with like I guess a so. Water crayon. Yeah, I guess it's kind of weird, huh? I don't know. I love the science aspects of this podcast. We are historians. This is what we've learned today, guys. We are historians. It's all things. Relax is all things. It's comedy. It's politics, religion, um, astrology. Us reading other people's quizzes yeah. online. So if you're illiterate, this is a great <laughs> podcast for you because we will read you things <laughs> that we s searched on the internet. So if you can't read... Well, I know this was a weird one, a weird episode, but I had a lot of fun today and I needed just some like Good. us time tonight. So this was really fun for me. I hope you guys enjoyed listening. We love you. Thank you to Audio Boom for letting us have this podcast. <laughs> and thank you. Oh, they're not regretting it at all. I hope not. And um, thank you to our amazing listeners. And of course, thank you to our producers, TJ and Tony and ourselves. I guess we're producers. Are we producers? It's important to thank yourself for things. Thank, thank you, thank, Colleen. Thanks, thank Eric. you, Eric. Thank you, myself. Uh, we're going to go sleep because we're tired. And we love you. And we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Bye. You can relax. Colleen and Eric have a podcast. The world is scary and we're locked in our home. But now we have big microphones. So you can relax, that's the name of our podcast.